The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Wheat School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. Just because it's been a little cooler of a start to spring across the prairies, doesn't mean that your wheat crop isn't going to be susceptible to soil-borne diseases. Chad Milligan fills us in on how seed treatments can protect you and how they actually fit into this equation. Check out the conversation now. Just looking out here and I see the snow covering the ground, it's April 20th, you know, typically, uh, through, throughout Western Canada, you may have seeding going on. Uh, and if you look at the soil conditions right now, uh, that soil is cold. Um, it, a lot of biology not going on right now. And part of that is that you're starting to put that seed into the ground. Something like soil borne disease uh, doesn't go away, whether it's cold or warm. Uh, different species of disease start to come out in certain conditions. Uh, we can't predict what the spring is going to be. Uh, the, the soil itself is, a, is, is not a friendly place to be. So your best line of defense in order to get crop established is really putting on that seed treatment. And what that seed treatment is able to do, and specifically just the solar borne disease, I'll talk about it for a second, is that you're able to now have fungicides protect against that disease that's in the soil looking for a food source. That fungus is looking for a food source, you're putting that seed into the ground, you now have protection around that. And I spoke to different uh, environmental conditions that soil borne disease likes. Uh, something like Pythium really likes cold, wet soil. So again, when I look out into the environment right now on April 20th, you know, we, we have some cold, wet soils. Uh, you know, that's what we're putting it into. But then as we gradually move into and onwards, uh, that soil is going to warm up, that soil is going to dry out a bit. And then we're going to see a different environmental for disease to move into. Things like Rhizoctonia, Fusarium species, they tend to come out when it starts to warm up and dry out a bit. But at the end of the day, you have a lot of different factors going into trying to stop that seed from growing. And putting on that seed treatment allows you as a grower to have that confidence that you'll get that seed coming out of the ground and get that crop established to move forward into uh, the rest of the season. And talk about the importance of knowing what's going on on your own operation and, and choosing seed treatments that, that suit your situation best. Yeah, that's a great question because if you uh, look at a label tells you a lot of things and, as, uh, as, and that's an important aspect if you're looking for, if you've got certain diseases over the years of uh, things like aphanomyces uh, and the pulse side of things, you've got some products out there that'll able to suppress that uh, disease somewhat in the spring, but give that chance for that plant to move on. Uh, other uh, cereal uh, products, they have different levels or degree of control uh, that control that disease or suppress that disease. So if you're in an in a area that maybe tends to have uh, something like species of Fusarium, uh, I really would look to the label to see what you have on that label to help you control versus the suppressed side of things. 